Good evening. Welcome to the Diablo 3 podcast. I'm your host, Flux, and we are online at DiabloII.net. I am joined on the show for tonight's podcast by James. That's BB. Who on the internet is known as... James. James. And by Dave the Brave. Yes. Hi. Who on the internet is known as James. Uh, correct. You Hi, it. James. Okay. We'll just call hey, you both James. James. That'll narrow it right down. Okay. Actually, you're known as Dave, or DTB, or something like that. <laughs> This is part two and concluding portion of our best of our uh, most and least iconic skills. We did three classes last week: the Demon Hunter, the Wizard, and the um, Crusader. Well, two and a half because I was really pretty much useless on the Crusader. But so we will continue that this show and cover up the last three classes, which are the uh, Necromancer, the Amazon, and the uh, Assassin. I think, right? <laughs> Something no, like that. Which, sounds, ba- sounds about right. Sounds right. Which Doctor, Barbarian, and Monk will be the three we cover tonight. We will not be covering the Diablo 4 characters, because those are still a secret. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So no druid topics. Wait, what? Did I say that? Okay, anyway. That will be the second part of the show. First up, a little bit of recent play stuff. And um, I've been playing a lot, but I will not talk first, because I'm the host, and that would be rude. So you said you've played almost nothing at all, James. Tell us what's, what's going on with your season. Uh, well, mostly because, A, school started, so work has started, and... I'm at the office, you know, most of my day. And two, the season actually started when I was on my uh, cross the country vacation, so I didn't have uh, a computer with me. So, so for the past month, I've had very, very little uh, home computer internet access. So, uh, not much play because of that. If you were playing, who would you be playing, and why? Oh, Barbarian, just because I play Barbarian most of the time, and I haven't played it in a while, so. Oh, that's a simple enough answer. Yeah, I'm actually playing, well, how's your... I'm actually playing my non-season barbarians, so. But it doesn't really count because non-seasonal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Fletch, you called me it out. Feels, it was, it was, called it was, me it was out. like preseason. Called me out my noob behavior. Okay, I'm full noob now. Are you playing? Are you playing softcore too? Uh, yes, because. Oh, oh my God, you are full noob. Yes, yes, I have been called out. Do you use do you use a, a like a console like one of those like joystick like thumbstick things or do you actually use a mouse and a keyboard? I, I kind of have to use a mouse and keyboard because I don't have any consoles at home. So uh, okay, you're not totally a noob then. Okay, okay, that. thank God. At least you have more than six buttons at your availability. Uh, that's a question mark there. So do you play with giant mittens on so you won't be able to hit the buttons too fast? No. Like Mickey Mouse finger gloves? No. No, my my, my fingers are fat enough that they fat finger key, keys themselves. So. Awesome. That's good you planned ahead that way. So with with that uh, incredible uh, intro thrown down, the gauntlet has been thrown down there, Dave the Brave. How's your season going? Uh, I've I've played more than James, but probably less than you. Uh, <laughs> I'm about Dave, more than James isn't hard. He's not played at all. Yes, <laughs> sure. Uh, I reached like but target three hundred or so. I think I'm just gonna finish the season journey just so I can get the the stash tab and then that, that's going to be it like i don't i feel like the game's not as exciting as it was when we got all that new content like every season um but i'm, I'm still having fun and i'm playing a witch doctor which uh it's my first time playing playing a witch doctor so that's uh you know something new something something different for me i truly well, sure at least you're, re- 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 you're researching for the podcast. I exactly, yeah, and and usually I play either a monk or a demon hunter, but I've also played barbarian, so I'm, I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty stoked about tonight. So you said you didn't have any uh, least iconic skills on the whole. You th- were, everything was iconic, and you just sort of liked them all. No, it's just like the ones that are iconic, like. Uh... Don't spoiler, spoiler. <laughs> well, it's it's the one that jump out, right? But the ones that you don't care about, you just don't care about them. You don't don't think about them. So they're either they are the ones that like don't have any visual uh any visuals associated with them, or like passive skills, or like buffs or stuff like that. But um uh, to me, the act- if you don't th- if you don't think bugs are iconic, you're gonna be out of luck on the witch doctor because like half his skills have bugs in them. Right. Pets. Uh, I think the the pet skills are, are definitely uh, the iconic ones. But um, yeah, yeah. So if you were playing more, would you be doing anything different? How is your witch doctor experience going? I mean, you, you you knew the class existed before. You just never played one at all, or not seriously, or what? Uh, yeah, I, I think I leveled 
one up uh, a few seasons ago, but I, I never really uh, played it. And now with the Hadrix gift, it makes it you know pretty easy to uh, <coughs> to get a set going and 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 get to the end game faster than before. So, and I was thinking before the season, I would really like to do a pet build, like uh, and and that the witch doctor is really the the class for that, right? Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty safe bet. Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's the right way to go. Yeah, kind of Netflix, kind of, kind of build, right? You just stand there, and your pets literally do all the killing for you. So that's that's pretty sweet. But you have to like put them in the right place in the right time and stuff. Yeah. And now that witch doctors don't cause enough lag to to crash a supercomputer, you can actually play pet builds. Yeah, uh, they've done a really good job, like stabilizing the game. Like it's it's really nice. Like there's practically no slowdown or anything. Even where there's like two, three witch doctors in a group. Uh, which there was a lot of them at the beginning of the season. Um, less so it seems I, now, but it's it's pretty good. Th- there's always too few witch doctors in the group because they're the bestest character ever. They are. All groups should be four witch doctors. <laughs> no, four witch doctors. I disagree. Three witch doctors and a barbarian. Yeah, they could just uh, they can just set the stuff up for you, and you can just like plow through the piranha piles. Yeah, something like that. That would be awesome. But they're really good. Like I'm kind of sad, actually, that I overlooked them so far because they're super tanky. Uh, they're super fast. And now they're... Um, I mean, they've, be, they've been buffed, right, in the, in the recent seasons. So they're super fun to play. They really are. Well, there's a Witch Doctor vote for, uh, for the home game players. I have not played a Witch Doctor in forever, and I may never play one again, but who knows? I think I last played them when they were back when uh, Zombie Bears was the only skill. You know, like like the whole thing was just like <laughs> murder the crowd and like Soul Harvest and then Zombie Bears. That was like Diablo 2.101 or something. But yeah, anyway, it was fun then. I've been playing a bunch this season. I mentioned in the last podcast, I started off playing a monk because UE is bullshit. I didn't want to play DHs this, this season. Huh. And I lasted about two weeks with that and they got, I didn't really care for the Dashing Strike build. And I, I was I was I said I was going to switch over to try Sun Wuko after the last podcast. And I did for like Two hours one night, it didn't really grab me, and I wouldn't play Demon Hunter again, because I'm, I'm pretty predictable that way, apparently. So I was playing an Italia's Demon Hunter for a while and having fun, and it's uh, super fast, you zoom around, and because, again, UV is bullshit, so I was avoiding doing that this season. But I was maxing... The, thing, the weird thing with that build, with Italia's, this was, this was the case seasons ago as well. It's, it's really good and zoom, super zoomy until it suddenly it's just, you just don't have any killing power anymore. I've never played any other builds or on any of their classes or sets that are really, really good until suddenly that you just can't kill. And it goes from, like, five-minute GRs, and you're, like, two GRs higher, and you're, like, you're like at 17-minute GRs. It's, I don't know. It's really weird how it just sort of tops out. Yeah. What, what style do you play? Well, that is, that is with the physical Natalias, which is super fun for farming, but it's not as good for concentrated damage. So okay. with that, I was doing GR60s in, like, 13 minutes, about as high as I could go comfortably. Mm. And that was, again, I wasn't super optimized. I hadn't, you know, augmented any of my items. You know, I was just playing sort of the basic thing, like, you know, maybe on level 55 or so um, gems. But it was good for that. And then, you know, I, was, I could do 55s in, like, four minutes, five minutes. And I, I, I could barely do 60s in 15. It's weird how just how fast it suddenly just sort of tops out. And you're not in danger. I'm playing hardcore. I mean, I'm not, I'm not any, anywhere near dying. You're so mobile with that build. You're so vaulty, and you're always zooming through stuff with strafe. Mm-hmm. But you just can't kill things. It's weird. It just sort of hits this wall. Mm-hmm. And so finally, like literally like three days ago, I said, okay, fine, I'll, I'll play some UE just to see how the difference is. I've played it in the past, obviously, and my, my bitch is not that it's not powerful. It's that it's too powerful. It's just too easy to use and too powerful. Yeah, but, but it's so good. It's so but good. It's, but, it's, but it's bullshit. Yeah, that's, that's, so that's why good. I didn't like it. It's just you felt – you don't feel like it's you that's exerting the skill. It's like I'm just wielding a super, you know, super more power – powerful build and it was nothing about my play skill that developed it and well you got to stand in the corner of the screen and right click and sometimes left click as well so there's a lot of skill uh, you're armor. overestimating the number of left clicks <laughs> well you got to you got to keep your focus and restraint up and you got to keep your uh, thrill of the hunt proc buffing so. uh you all suck I, it, at least like every four seconds you have to left click so no. I, this, yeah, build, this build is super fun to play like it it, it feels great to I don't know, decimate everything on the screen. It's fast. The the visuals are awesome. It's it's a great build. I like it. I'm not playing all it this that season, careful, but... all that pinpoint aiming that's required. <laughs> how your shots cover the entire other half of the screen, and no matter where you shoot them. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm not. I obviously, it's very powerful. I've been bitching about this for like the last ten podcasts. I'm not going to belabor the whole point again. But I, I don't mind that there's like one really easy to play build that's kind of like the training wheels build. But it shouldn't be the most powerful build, also. Mm-hmm. But it's a actually, it's not the most powerful build. Yeah. The, the, the fan of knives thing is the most powerful now. The top, yeah. the top ladder people have that. Yeah. But that that build is like that's not even a demon. That's like a that's like a, that's like a crusader thorns build or something. I'm not sure what that is. But it's I'm not a play it's it, a but. basically a bug or not bug, but an exploit. Uh, in the game build, in my opinion, but I mean it's clever. I don't. I mean you have to use a lot of different gear. Obviously, mm-hmm. if anybody doesn't know, the build you use the two rings that give you you know the super buffs to damage if you're not using any other sets. But they have ancients bonus for damage for ancients and whatnot. Yeah, and so everything else is an ancient legendary, and you use the whole thing is basically the one weapon that gives you what is it? It, it gives you 100 percent more damage, I think, or 500 percent, something like that. Yeah, every second up to 30 stacks on your next fan of knives. Mm-hmm. And so people just put on every piece of survival gear in the world, socket all their diamonds, and just kind of waddle, waddle around in these huge packs of monsters, and just nuke them all every now and then with this giant fan of knives. How's that better than and, UE? Well, at least it's like you have a chance of dying at some point. Uh, I don't think it is, but I'm not playing that one. But it, I don't know. It's not even a Demon Hunter build. It's just not, you know, it's totally melee. It has nothing to do with the actual class. You use fanaticism and, you know, you strafing. Yeah. But I mean, if you're looking on hardcore right now, like the highest clears on on the U.S. hardcore solo are like I don't know, 85, eight, it's like 87, 88, I think. Wow. And those are all with the the Fan of Knives build, the weird conglomeration pack. And all the best, the next best down is like 81 or 82, which is the UE builds. And then you have Marauders at like 62. So yeah, it's a little okay, not that bad, but it's it's a long way back. And then I'm sure someone's playing the Shadow set somewhere, but they should probably look into Mental Assistance because that's not really much you played either. <laughs> But anyway, so I put this stupid UE set together, unoptimized, I don't have anything augmented, like one item is ancient, I'm not using any, I don't have the, I don't have a perfect gang's bow, I have a pretty good dead man's legacy, blah blah blah, instantly did GR66, like in like seven and a half minutes. And this is after I was maxing out on like barely finishing 60s with my Natalia's build that I've been playing the entire season. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, this pretty much gives you a sense of how powerful one build is versus the other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, and you can do I don't know mid you know low 80s with UE if you'd really be able, I, people in my Katniss on my fans list is on 78 the highest I've seen anybody do and hmm. I mean he's not even playing that class he's playing a Crusader now for some reason because you know, I don't know whatever but yeah it, and I actually did name the class I said UE is bullshit I actually named my character I made a male demon hunter which is strike one and his name is actually UE is bullshit I mean U <laughs> U E I S B U L L S H E T that is his character name nice. So at least I, I can play it, but at least I have to feel I don't feel guilty while I'm doing it. Yeah, but to be fair, a really good Yang's recurve. Why, really why are we going to gonna be fair? Find. Well, Where does that start? yeah, I mean, I, I played Yui a lot, and I never had like the dream, the dream Yang. Like I never found. I had an ancient one, but it was I don't remember what it was what it was. It, it wasn't perfect, far from it. But uh, so you can spend a lot of time farming for that. True. Indeed you can. I actually just I actually did spend like my last ten thousand shards just trying to get that bow when I was still go. playing the Marauders. Yeah. And I got three ancients and I kept you know, I kept re re rolling them, I kept gambling them. I used I burned up tons of uh I actually ran out of um legendary I ran out of Forgotten Souls re rolling them. Because, you know, it's not too you can farm, you know, the new you can get what, twelve? You know, doing T eleven runs is pretty easy. You can get twelve legendary materials per act. But you you know blowing through fifty legendary maps a time that 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 runs out pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually ran out of those before I ran out of the the act maps. Anyway, so if I had the whole thing with the UE um, getting the yeah, Yang's uh, Yang's recurve is called I believe is you have to either get a pretty good damage roll or else get um, discipline as a secondary, one or the other. Both is ideal, of course. Yeah. yeah. But if you don't get either, it's shit. And the first two first two or three ancients I got had neither, so they were all just shit. Oh wow. And then I finally got one that had a had a had a, a shitty damage roll, but it, at least it had nine, nine or ten decks or uh, discipline. Yeah, you want twelve. Yeah, <laughs> well, it was it's far from ideal, but at least it was there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't even have the the chess piece with discipline on it. I, I've been gambling my last like thousand shards on chess pieces, and I keep getting UE chess pieces that don't have discipline as a secondary. And that's like you know essential. So. Yeah. Once I get that, I'll be doing. I can I'm trying to do like GR seventy two, just effortlessly or whatever. Anyway, UB is bullshit, and you're a bad person if you like it. I, your uh, thoughts, Dave? I I do love it. Uh, Which, I do you feel like you're a bad person for loving it. No, He's a bad person. I'm, He's I'm a bad uh, person. You play barbarians, dude. Hey, <laughs> that doesn't mean I can't claim other people are bad people. 
Well, yeah, so it gives you a first-hand insight into this. Yeah. Well, what do you play as the barbarian, though? What build do you play? Uh, he plays a UE barbarian. It's, it's the worst build ever. I play Leap Quake. It's my favorite build. Play nice. style. Nice. I've never played that one, but uh, whenever I see a barbarian in the in the group that's playing it, it's super fun just to watch. Yeah, uh, it's super fun to play. So, yeah. as a barb, did you you what did you think of that whole uh, Wyatt Chang's post like last week? It was talking about how the whirlwind build isn't really that powerful because it's hard to make it powerful without everything else. Ba- like basically, that, he like said a lot of things without saying anything. So that's well, that's why he's the game director. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. It's it's a lot of. Uh, I can't remember the the right terminology, but a lot of a, uh, uh, not a smoke, but a lot of like. Mm, uh, TLDR designing games is hard. Yeah, yeah. It basically, he said said nothing that no one, anyone who's played the game all, quite a bit hasn't already known. So. Yeah. He said that it's not so. Basically, the whirlwind. If people who didn't read that, whirlwind is not currently a real comparable to the other high end sets. Mm-hmm. But it's fun to play, and you can, like, you know, zoom through the levels, and it moves really fast. Kind of a parallel to Natalia's, actually, there. I mean, it's super fun to zoom around. You can kill everything, but it's not really comparable to the highest end builds. Yeah. And he also t- and, talked about the problem. And why I just said it's hard to fix that, because there's so many legendaries that are used in that and other things. Mm-hmm. It's like everything kind of overlaps. Right. What yeah. he said was that uh, a lot of bar builds use two sets, right? Uh, they yes. have the Ring of Royal Grandeur somewhere in there. Well, usually on your... In your queue, but right, and uh, then you have um, Rekor like four, Immortal Key six, or the other way yeah, around. Exactly, and so his point, he, what he was saying was that that makes changing anything really difficult because everything you touch is like a thousand moving parts that you touch as well. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's that's Diablo, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, making games is hard, as they often put. Yeah. Not- and balancing them once they've actually been made, if that's part of your job. So, yeah. I'm wondering what's the <laughs> inside Blizzard? Like, what's the motivation now to work to work on Diablo three and to come up with new stuff when there's obviously uh, something in the works? Well, not much of one apparently. Cause everybody's quit except for Wyatt. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the other thing he said is it causes performance issues at the high end, and uh, they're trying to make better optimizations every patch. So. I'm kind of amazed they can fix performance at all. I mean, this game is like, the engine is like 12 years old at this point. Well, I mean, they started the engine, what, 2008? I, yeah, they started the engine like 2001, man. It's updated from the Blizzard North version. Yeah, when Greater Reefs weren't even an idea at the time. And I bet... Yeah, the main development started in 05, so right. it, it, it revived anyway. Uh, so I hope that for Diablo 4, can we, can we talk about Diablo 4? No, we we said we, I said we were talking about that earlier. Remember, I said we're not doing any of the characters from Diablo Four. Yeah, we no, don't want to talk about the druid. <laughs> I mean, wait, which, which, you have to wait till BlizzCon. It's only going to be two months away. Well, the only thing I want to say is I really hope that they the engine that they're going to make is is scalable. You know that they because like so many times that the excuse that we've heard, I mean the excuse, it's true, but that that's what we've heard, right? Oh, the witch doctor, like it's really hard to optimize because blah blah. No, it's the barbarian, and there's there was always something. Uh, that caused the game to run poorly because, well, you're making a server-side game, like you're making a game that requires a server to run, and so, yeah, that should be that should be your main concern, right? So hopefully they they've learned a lot of things from from this game moving forward. I hope. Yeah, and all, since all the same programmers and developers are still there, it'll be great next time. They can just carry that knowledge right into the next project, <laughs> just like they did with Diablo two to Diablo three. All that continuity worked out really well. <laughs> Wait, that was sarcasm, I think. I, I think. I am kind of... I mean, they have fixed... I mean, it's kind of amazing. You look at what was in the game when they launched it, you know, like, compared to now. I mean, how many... You know, there were like there was like two procs in the game when they launched. And now like, right. like, everybody's got like, you know, three legendary rings, legendary gems, and like 14 procs from their other legendary gear. And there's just so much more going yeah. on. It's amazing the engine can even handle it at all. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they've done an amazing job optimizing what it was, but... At some point, it's like this Frankenstein's monster. You're just bolting on new engine parts to like a Dodge, like an old Ford Pinto. Yeah, it's easy to be cynical and like, oh, yeah, it's I, I not working. Find that but true. this game, I mean, it's pretty amazing that it runs as well as it does because, you know, um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so the drinking game tonight is when anybody says anything that could inadvertently be the the slogan of this podcast. And yeah, was just, you just had your first drink when he said it's easy to be cynical. <laughs>
That, that is probably our logo around here. Okay, any other uh, general stuff before we get into the whole iconic skills thing? Uh, did you want to talk about the the one post about Diablo 4 and the, uh, the, the rehashing that went on the subreddit a couple, either last week? Yeah, Diablo 4 is confirmed, right? Uh, kind of. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that that was the that was the one of the sentiments. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I put off talking. We had that whole rumor months ago where they had you know they have the new like logo for Diablo and it's like the D in a square and it's like some kind of dice game or something. No one's quite sure what, but <laughs> that that was the whole that was that that was like leaked out like as part of the BlizzCon goodie bag. And then if you notice the Wyatt yeah. did a little short video interview from Gamescom, it's like the same logos in the background there. I don't think anybody really cares anymore, but yeah. it's like a D in a square. It's like D square or blow. But I thought that was the the D with like arrows coming out from every side, like up, down, left, and right. Oh. It was another ah. dice bag. I, I yeah, I assume there was some other dice game coming out, but right. I, I really haven't been following it because I don't care. Maybe that's what they're going to announce at, at uh, BlizzCon: a uh, mobile dice game. Diablo themed. That's that's. The yeah, you know there was. I don't know if you even remember. There was a Diablo. They've made multiple Diablo two uh, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, applications games. Those were like official products back in like two thousand and two and two thousand and three, which everyone's forgotten. But I mean, you can see, you can find pictures. Look on the wiki, you know, on our Diablo wiki and stuff. There's like links to it. I mean, they have like you know, they, these are like real things. So what do you mean, a pen and paper? Yeah, like pen and paper, mm-hmm. but they were you know you roll you roll like twenty sided dice and all that kind of crap to play them. Yeah, though, so. I know. And you get your uh, virginity armor on and you're ready to roll. Yep. Okay, anything else? Uh, Iconic skill time. Diablo four confirmed. Yeah, we'll get right on that. Well, I mean, they have we've been posting this for months, but I mean, you look at the current like you look at Blizzard's jobs page and there's like eight openings for the Diablo team and like seven of them say unannounced project. Yeah. And they're all like, you know, lead character artist, lead designer, lead programmer. It's like obviously very high end hiring for some major thing they're scaling up in the far distant future. But yeah, but they can announce it at BlizzCon. I mean, that's I think it's yeah, pretty I mean, reasonable like, to assume that. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, BlizzCon twenty twenty two. We'll get right on that. No, no, I think they're going to announce it this year. I don't think that's too far fetched. I think that's I don't think so. Far fetched, but the wrong calendar number. Really? Oh, oh, I'm they're, they haven't even hired anybody major project. They don't, Blizzard has learned. That would have been true in like 2002 when they were announcing things like eight years out. In recent years, they don't announce shit until it's ready. How long, how long between Overwatch was announced and launched? Like, like eight months? Yeah, less than a year in the beta, or the alpha was open. Was it closed beta out in like six months? That was at BlizzCon two years ago, because I was there when, uh, yeah, two years ago. Because it was, it was that, I didn't go to last year's BlizzCon. It was, it was available for play, you know, when, then, mm-hmm. so. It wasn't that short, but I mean, compared to the other games, I mean, it was like five, six years in the old days. Mm-hmm. I mean, Diablo 3 announced in 2008, and the damn game contract 2012, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, anyway. I'm going to stay okay, optimistic. So most, <clears throat> that's fun to be, that's, no, no, we said earlier, <laughs> easy to be cynical. That's, that's not the show. You're on the wrong podcast if you're optimistic, man. Mm-hmm. So, most and least iconic skills. We did this last time. I will, I will give you guys a chance to each say what, what your uh, choosing criteria was. This is obviously not the most powerful skills, not the best in the current game, not the ones you think are the most fun. All those things can factor into your decision. We had kind of a debate last week, especially about the Crusader, which is a class I've never played since the beta and don't have much interest in. And I had my iconic skills. The other guests were like, that's not iconic it sucks. I'm like, well, I didn't say it was good in the game. I just say it, it's iconic in terms of what this class should be. And like, yeah, but the, act- the actual, you know, the optimization of the game is garbage. You know, Falling Sword was the main uh, sticking point there, mm-hmm. which was like this really iconic, you know, this huge leap in the air and blast things. And it's like, it's never been useful in the game. I'm like, well, I didn't, that's not the argument. Yeah. But obviously we can all have different points on what makes iconic or not. Uh, I'll go first here. Uh, my criteria for iconic was it's something that players associate with the character, especially yep. players who don't play the character. Yep. So, like, Barbarian Mains... So, Falling Sword, basically. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, it, in some sense, I would say Accurates would probably be the better one for uh, Crusaders, because that's that was, like, the skill that every... Or, or even uh, Stampede, um, or whatever the mount is called. Uh, he's escaping me at the... Horse of Glory. Yeah, Horse of Glory. I mean, those are the two, and maybe Fallen Sword are the three that sort of stick out in your mind, especially if you've never played Crusader, of what the Crusader uses and does. So, I would have. I had a lot of Shield Bash skills in there. I thought those were iconic. I don't even know what Akarats does. It makes you hit really fast. I think. Uh, it's 
uh, it's one of the possible passives to choose too. So, but that's not. I don't. Anyway, I don't. I don't yeah. We're not talking about the Crusader iconic skills here. Anyway, mm-hmm. so this this show is going to be the Witch Doctor, the Monk, and the Barb are going in reverse alphabetical order, just because why not? So tell it. So you start us. Uh, you don't actually have any. So we're doing worst first, least iconic, and then most iconic because we're going to get better over time, like Diablo three itself. Mm-hmm. And I was going to have you go first, Dave, and explain what your iconic criteria was, but you didn't actually pick a least. You said they were all awesome. Uh, for the Witch Doctor? Witch Doctor. <laughs> well, so just in general, what was your iconic criteria? What's your least, what's your, what's your least most iconic Witch Doctor skill? Least most iconic. Uh, can I, can well, I you say... Didn't pick, you didn't pick a least icon. Did you pick a, t- a least and most there, um, um, James? I have a least. It's a passive. Uh, okay, I have several least passes. So just do your explanation, Dave, and then we'll go into I'll just do my least in a row, and you guys can tell me why I'm wrong. Yeah, I, I pretty much agree with James, like with an emphasis on the, the visual aspect, because it's like, yeah, if I'm in a group and I see a uh, class uh, that I'm not playing or that I've never played and that I'm not very familiar with, if I recognize the skill right away because I see it a lot, it's part of the meta and whatnot, like that's what makes it iconic. Uh my opinion, but that also tends to vary season over season. Uh, like I've, uh, yeah, we, we can we can come back to that. But um, so, for example, the the witch doctor, um, the, the all of the pet skills to me are, are iconic because that's uh, that's the witch doctor. That's what he does, right? He, he walks around really fast, and he's got an army of goofy. Uh, little creatures running yeah. around him. Yeah, there. Uh, except for the walks fast part, I agree with you. Yeah, I mean there there are three sort of iconic witch doctor skills I sort of chose. Um, uh, we'll get to those in a second. But did you want to go over your least iconic ones first, Flux? Because we're going uh, worst to first. Yes, I have um, four at least iconics. None of them. I kind of agree with you guys. We said earlier. A little bit like the wizard last week, I had trouble coming up with uniconic skills since the guy is so well themed as the witch doctor. Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't have like some random like you know. I mean, there's there's obviously some skills that are kind of tacked on for other classes. Like here's a, here's a hole in this character. Let's make a way to have it. Like none, nobody was a fan of the various um, avatar skills for the crusader. I don't yeah. know what they're called phalanx and the other ones. Uh, yeah, phalanx. Those just seem kind of like tacked on. It's like okay, he needs a way to have some minions, so here they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nothing for the Crusader really. Uh, the Crusader, nothing for the Witch Doctor really felt like it was just sort of weird like that, like it didn't really fit. Mm-hmm. My fourth one. Uh, le- so this is from. These are the four least iconic ones, going from four to one. Wall of Death, number four. That's yeah. That was what I put as not very iconic, but still felt to me. It still felt quasi Witch Doctory. So I mean, it's got zombies that come out of the ground. Yeah, I it's mean, not it's, a bad idea. It's it's not. It's not it, to me. It's like you're saying that's least iconic because it's. It's still iconic, but the least amount of iconicism which or association you have with the Witch Doctor. So, in terms of a flavor, I felt they did very well with the Witch Doctor in that regards because we're struggling to come up with things like that doesn't feel like the Witch Doctor. There's just so many. And this one is partially because it kind of sucks in the game. It's just never been a very useful skill, yeah. which is like, I I admit not my not my stated criteria, and yet here it is. Yeah, there, there are just so many undead zombie skills that they all tend to you know blend together. Uh, visually speaking, mm-hmm. uh, like you have like the zombie charger, which is, yeah. you know, it's not, it's it's just one of those. But um, and yeah, the wall of death, not not a huge uh, visual impact on the screen. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's uh, kind of with the witch doctor. Um, yeah, wall of death. It's basically just kind of like a glorified version of um, Grasp of the Dead, yeah, essentially. Basically. But, oh, the thing I was going to say, Witch Doctor has. We mentioned this back during the top ten Witch Doctor skills some months ago. He's got probably the most varied and weird rune effects of any class in the game. Yes. Mm-hmm. So again, that makes it kind of hard to rate these because there's always like one or two rune effects in every skill that are totally different and wild and off the wall. Sometimes in a cool way. Mm-hmm. So like like you mentioned like zombie charger is totally lame skill, but of course it has like undead zombie bears like the like maybe the most iconic crazy witch doctor skill in the game. Yeah. So it's kind of hard. Some of these are there's at least like one or two yeah. versions of them that are awesome and weird. True. So number three, fire bats. Yeah, that's... again, kind of a cool skill. I like how it worked. I, I actually praise this one in the, in the witch doctor skill thing. I mean, it's like obviously it's just inferno, but it's like how do you make an animal be part of inferno? Mm-hmm. But I mean, it just seems some kind of. I'm, what is what is what are fire bats? It's like there's like some kind of like, if they were like you know face sucking vampire bats, that would be fine. 
that would be totally like iconic and would fit the yeah. witch doctor. What the, what the hell is a fire bat? I mean, uh, they obviously wanted to make some kind of ranged fire skill, and they just can attack this in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, it, I don't know. I play every. I kind of liked using fire bats when I was leveling up, leveling up my witch doctor. So I don't know. Yeah. See, I, I I didn't say it was a bad skill. Yeah. It's just it's not. It's just kind of weird. Yeah, it yeah. Really fit the well. Okay, I, I could buy that. I could buy that. There's a lot Do of those of skills you... that you uh, you're going to use them as you level up because they just become available, but they don't scale up very well, and so you just you know leave them behind as you as you move on. And and fire bats are definitely one of those for the witch doctor, at least that I noticed when I was playing this season. And I even meant, I mentioned this even in the with the demon hunter last week. Like like twin chakram is kind of the same thing. That was like our least iconic witch you know demon hunter skill, like these giant glowing star things. But I use the hell out of Twin Chakra leveling up. I mean, it's a great skill from, yeah. like, you know, 20 to 50. Mm-hmm. The other funny... If this, here's, your, here's your long-term callback. Do either of you guys remember the movie Beastmaster? Yes. Like, 30 years ago, and he had, like, pet ferrets and stuff? Yes. A- remember there were, like, monsters in that? There were, like, giant bats that would, like, envelop people with their wings, and they would, like, dissolve their bodies in two seconds, and a bunch of armor would fall out when they opened their armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quasi. If that, if that was a rune effect in Fire Bats, I would have put this in the top ten list. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Blizzard should have thought of that, right? Like a really, like a much cooler version of Toad of Hugeness. You like, there's like one giant bat. It like drops down the monster and like just devours their flesh in like three seconds, and then drops up a bunch of like armor and then like yeah. like like bones and shit falls yeah, out, so like license plates and stuff. Yeah, so that should have been what the hungry bats uh, ruin effect was instead. Okay, good. We have we agree on that. Okay, next up, kind of a, I have kind of a tie for the first. I have Spirit Barrage and Acid Cloud. Yeah. They're both just kind of magic-y, tacked-on, meteor-like bullshit. Uh, yeah. Vomit mask, etc. Well, I right? mean, to me, <laughs> yeah, spirit But the mask, vomit mask is super iconic, though. Yeah, to me, like... The, Nobody plays a witch doctor once you have a mask of Mardi Gras face vomiting on their head. Uh, no, uh, but once you see it, you know it's a witch doctor. Like, there's no possible confusion. Yeah. Yeah, but what what is it? What is witch doctory about it? This this thing appears in the sky and starts puking acid on it's, stuff. I mean, it's. I mean, the witch doctor unleashes poison and undead things. I mean, this is the this is the quasi problem we're having it with the unikonic things is they've done a very good job uh, associating the skills the witch doctor does with its flavor, and so. Yeah. yeah, but it's not an animal pet. It's not like some natural force out of the ground. It's mm-hmm. just this thing appears in the sky and just it's just it's just meteor with acid, right? Yeah, kind right. Of. Every class has this associated uh, element, right? So the witch doctor is the poison. Like the the monk is going to be um, hoddy, I think. Yeah, Holy. and so on and so forth. And so you have tons of uh, poison poison skills for the witch doctor and so what you're going to do poison darts and, and some are better than others this is, yeah. this is not better. okay so anyway I, those weren't horrible or whatever I just thought those were the least iconic you guys now I have um, I have several honorable mentions and then a top three for most iconic but why don't you guys go ahead with your with your, uh, your top most iconic list why don't you go James you said you had them in order uh, so my in order were number th- just just do number three and number two and then we'll do number one last uh, horrify uh, any number of rune effects for Horrify, and number two is Spirit Walk. Spirit Walk, really? Mm-hmm. How is that the most iconic? It's just, it, it seems like that's a skill, it, it's one of those things, when, when, if you play the game, you every time you're going to see the Witch Doctor sort of zoom around the map, it's like, and they're in Spirit Walk. Yep. So, uh, to me it's sort of like, that's something you sort of see all the time when you see a Witch, when you see a witch Doctor in game. So... Well, that's because it's only his his only fast movement skill, but I don't I don't see how that really ties into the witch doctor lore or fantasy all that. Uh, he reaches, it make my list, he reaches you know. out to the spirit world. How is that yeah. not witch doctor? Yeah. But how does that make you go faster? It's it's a it's a uh, I don't know. <laughs> to to me, it just it just feels like that's the in game. Maybe not. That's just the in game iconic skill for the witch doctor of. This is what it, well, everybody uses it, but I don't. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Well. Okay. So we disagree. So move on. So so, so do your most, but not your number one, uh, Dave. Uh, my number three is actually also Spirit Walk, and my number two is Piranhas. Because mm-hmm. Piranha. They, yeah, the Piranha uh, uh, the tornado thing that that yes. specific uh, ruin because it's been part of the meta for so long. And it's just I don't know. I really like I really like the effect on the screen. It's it's super uh, efficient. It works really well. Um, and I don't know piranhas. Mm-hmm. 
I have that as an honorable mention. Super cool late game addition to fill a void, but it's just a glorified version of Grasp of the Dead, right? Eh, kind of. Eh, it works better. The card control... Uh, well, it's a glorified version of Grasp of the Dead. Yeah. It's Grasp of the Dead that sucks stuff into it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I admit there's like there's no Bogadile or whatever, but it's still got pretty cool stuff, right? Yeah. But I, I, I mean, for, we had kind of the same debate over Black Hole with the Wizard, where it's like it's obviously a really cool skill, and it, it fills a necessary void for the character's play style, but yeah. we're, which is, I mean, we're going to get to uh, the Barbarian in a minute here. Some classes got a late-game skill added on that's, that's a piece of shit, i.e. the Barbarian with Avalanche, Avalanche but yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that shortly. But, you know, you look at, when you look at the skill, obviously, I'm sure there's people who just started playing the game with, you know, the expansion. But, I mean, the last skill for every class is one they added on in its expansion, and it basically kind of fills a void the class has had. And so how, you know, some of those are not as, um, you know, lower feeling as, uh, they are, as others. But then I think we had votes for, for Black Hole as the number one wizard skill, and here you have Piranhas as very close to the number one witch doctor iconic skill. Yeah. So obviously they can think of new skills that are uh, super iconic. I also had honorable mention Poison Dart. I mean, it's, yeah. it's sort of like the teeth version of D3. I mean, yeah. yeah. This one he's, he's was on my. He spits poison darts, right? This mm-hmm. one was on my maybe list um, because it, it it's really fun to play too. Like the the sound of the the little uh, dart going through the what, what you call the the little thing that he the blowpipe the blowpipe right. Uh, it's it's a it's a fun skill and it's definitely uh, very iconic. I think. And like many others, has some really cool um, root effects. The whole snake to the face thing is a nice touch. Mm-hmm. I also thought Plague of Toads was pretty cool. I mean, not really cool enough to be like super top three iconic, but yeah. Admittedly, it's just charged bolt with toads. But then again, it's charged bolt with toads. Yeah. It, I mean, who can argue with that? It, right? it just feels witch doctory. I I never see it used though. Like I think, well, again, here we're, here we're debating the whole, you know, functional versus uh, theoretical. Yeah. Right, but if it's iconic, shouldn't it, shouldn't it be used by a lot of people, you know? It could yeah. be used to level up, though. Like, Yeah, I suppose, yeah. yeah. Well, then again, we're arguing, you know, theory versus implementation, yeah. which was our whole Crusader debate last week. Yeah. Anyway, number three, Grasp of the Dead. It, admittedly, it's just a world Witch Doctor version of Firewall, mm-hmm. and it's kind of, you know, it's like the lesser version of Piranado, but... It's just kind of cool. I mean, it's 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 clever. It's got, got you know hands coming out of the ground and stuff, but it's it's functional. It's a nice CC effect, and yeah, it's got a very nice witch doctory theme. I have a tie for number two with summon zombie dogs and gargantuan. I thought they were both really well implemented. You know, he obviously has to have pets. He has to have minions. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can certainly throw in like you know fetish swarm as well there. Yeah. But they're they're nice. They're not you know the the dogs are all rotting and grotesque, and the and the gargantuan's like this huge rotting. You know, how do you make a golem that's not just like a swamp golem? You know, that would have been like the easy default. It's like a big green golem. And instead, it's like, no, it's like this, this gargantuan's all like put together from other parts of monsters and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought, you know, very very iconic, very well done. And obviously, it's it's essential for his, uh, you know, have some muscle. So what's your number one, um, um, James? What's your number one witch doctor most iconic skill? Uh, I mean, you already listed it, but summon zombie dogs. Like, there you go. Yeah. You no know, votes for gargantuan? You just throw it in there? Uh, To me, gargantuan just, I sort of... Discounted it because of I had zombie dogs already, so uh, I mean it's it's definitely in the I guess you would say my honorable mention category then. But just when you think witch doctor, you think pets, and you think the first pet you get, which is summon zombie dogs. So I think of Are you the kind of throwing sacrifice in there as part of the same skill, or yeah. uh, kind of. I mean, to be the fact you can blow them up is a big perk, right? Yeah, that's a fun skill, but I don't consider it iconic with the witch doctor. So, or I mean, not super iconic, I guess, but. Do you detract any points, deduct any points for that summon zombie dogs is just like describes the skill and the name in like the most boring fashion possible? Uh, that's no, because iconic sometimes is it's what you associate with the with the character class. And we associate pet. One of the big things you associate with the witch doctor is the pet classes. So summon zombie dogs is the most iconic of the pets that the witch doctor has. So do you recall they were called mongrels initially during development? Yeah. Way back I, thought, I, think, I would think that was a much cooler skill if it was still called mongrels. Mm-hmm. Even if it was like rotting mongrels. I never. What, what if, it, what, I never what if your favorite wizard skill was called throw giant flaming orb <laughs> instead of like fireball? You know, it just it just seems like a dumb name to me. Yeah, I don't know. I might get attached to the dumb name just because it's it's stupidly hilarious. And no other skill has a uh, verb in it. Like it should just be called zombie dogs. 
Yeah, just kind of where they. I, I just it just seems stupid to me. I never uh, noticed that before. No, it's it blows me off. So I have a, my favorite my favorite demon hunter skill is shoot lots of arrows with at one time. <laughs> That's a really cool skill. I make a gun sound. I also like the throw trap on ground that zaps things. That's a really cool skill too. Could they have thought of a better name? Seriously, that always bothers me. Now, so what's your number one, uh, Dave? It's both uh, zombie dogs and gargantuan because those are oh, like, the, the main pets of the, of the witch doctor and. Um, I love the sound that the, the gargantuan makes. This I can't, I can't make it, but uh, it's got this. Well, you're not a gargantuan. No, he's got this goofy little sound, you know, walking around, and he's he's got this very uh, signature uh, kind of walk that he does, you know, uh, bumping left and right, and and it's a great skill. Okay, my number one witch doctor skill has not been mentioned yet by either of you guys. Anybody want to guess? My, my number one most iconic witch doctor skill. Angry chicken. No. Voodoo. No. Horrify. No. Jeez. You're going to name them all eventually. Huh? You're going to get hey, a right, uh, process but elimination. No, I don't know. No guess for you, James? Uh, None of you mentioned it all. No, I mean, hex would be the, the obvious choice, but you said chicken, so no. I, I think falling sword is the most iconic. Oh, wait, wrong class. <laughs> I actually said locust swarm was the most iconic. Yeah, that it's like it's it's like bugs. It's super deadly insects. It does the dot thing over time. It's totally like no other class could ever have any skill that involves zo- locust swarms, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, again, we're maybe getting into the whole you know functional versus theoretical here. But I mean, I, I was debating the other ones, and I just think that's like yeah, that's I mean, I don't know if this is what you debut the class with at the at BlizzCon, but. It's just the whole remember the whole concept of witch doctors initially was that they do damage over time and it's like poison damage. Mm-hmm. It wasn't you know one big smashing kill thing like like wizards do, and this is like the like the ultimate damage over time skill. Like you shoot out these things and they do huge damage. They spread to other targets. It covers the whole screen. It's like you're master of bugs and stuff. Yeah, I mean you're you're sort of debating what the class was in theory versus how the class sort of played out and um, and how it developed over time is I, I would say the. Pe- I mean, we both, me and Dave, both think the pets are the more iconic part of him uh, as he's developed over time. So, I mean, well, these are pets, but you just can't pet them as much. No, you know? they're not pets. Nope. But they they, they love you. <laughs> they eat things for you. They kill other people for you. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not, so do all all bet all good pets do. So, any any final witch doctor thoughts? I mean, I don't I don't think even the least. The least iconic skill is still pretty iconic, so it's hard to do too much debating there. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's and, what's the name of the skill where um, all these little dart dart shooting guys? Fetish army. Yes, thank you. That one, uh, honorable mention. Yeah, I, I, I kind of debated about that. I mean, obviously, it is very iconic. It's also like a straight call out from Diablo 2's like monsters, which is kind of a cool thing. Yeah, and obviously, it's a super powerful skill, but it's it's like. I don't know. It, it seems like there's every f- different kind is all kind of thrown in at once. Like if you start off with one guy and then you had to like build up her power, but immediately you can f- you can harvest like twenty of them at once. You can summon like a bunch. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Somehow that seems less appealing to me. If if you like revive those from like other dead monster bodies, like revive like the necromancer skill, that would seem a little more iconic in some ways instead of just magically appearing like fifty little dark guys out of nothing. I don't know. Yeah. If they were all undead little zombie things like those horrible monsters in Act 3 of Diablo 2, I don't know. Anyway. So Monk. Next up, Monk. Um, I thought the Monk was a little harder to, qu- to, to quantify the list since the archetype is such a throw-together thing. Mm-hmm. It's, like it's kind of a combination of like Eastern, you know, saffron-robed martial arts, and then he looks like Rasputin, like the European Monk stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But how does that even really work? I mean, like, the Eastern Monk stuff is pretty obvious. Like, there's martial arts, and there's, like, pillars, and he summons things and, and throws down huge bells. What does a European Monk, like, bring to the table in terms of combat? Like, Nothing. chanting? Manuscript copy? Right. I think it's all based on the this Asian, um, I mean, not European version of, of that mythology, right? It's the, the super fast guy. Like, he's moving so fast that yeah, but he looks like a white guy with a beard, you know? He the, only, the only thing European brought in was him looking like a white guy. And he's yeah. got an Eastern European accent. Yeah, yeah, he he sounds like a Russian Russian who lived in China for many years and it's, learned their it's, ways. It's and then gave of, I think that's, I think that, that's actually Jay Wilson's life story, oddly enough. <laughs> it is a mess. He can cut a hamburger in half with both hands. 
Yeah, so, but also the monk has a bunch of, like, half-paladin kind of skills. Like, he has auras and healings and buffs, but those don't really have anything monkish about them. Right. Mm -hmm. He seems kind of thrown together. I mean... Yeah. I don't know what the class is really supposed to be. It doesn't really... It almost seems like, in retrospect, they could have made him a full-on Eastern style, like a Shaolin monk. I mean, all his combat skills. What if he had magical skills that were, like, summoning, like, dragon spirits or... Like, you look at the, the, uh, the rune effects of his mystic ally, it's all like earth, fire, air, water. Like, last avatar kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, they could have made the whole class like that, it would have a much stronger thematic thing. It wouldn't be as interesting or different or whatever, but I think we might have some interesting de debates here about what's iconic or not for the monk, since I'm not sure what the class even is supposed to be iconically. Yeah, right. maybe that's... If you look at any, any Diablo class, like if you start... If you start deconstructing them, like I don't think they hold up at all, and so well, the witch doctor did, right? We just had this debate. Uh, does it though? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's magical and invented, but right. I mean, the wizard's pretty iconic, pretty consistent. The barbarian's pretty consistent. They're all archetypes. We had a debate about the demon hunter last time in terms of are all of the me mechanical type skills really iconic? Is she an archer? Is she a tinkerer? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's kind of the thing I get with the monk a little bit, where it doesn't really hold together that well. I don't know. I, I thought about it as, again, like this martial arts guy who moves so fast you can't see him, and that's kind of where I stop, because, like, yeah, what... But there's a lot of skills that don't really match that, then. So, anyway, so what's your least iconic uh, monk skill, then? It's any, any support skill, because no one knows they're there. No one knows you're shooting them. Um, so, like, Breath of Heaven... yeah. Or are you talking about auras or everything else, too? Yeah, like the mantras. Just call them auras. Come on, play auras. Them. Seriously. Yeah. Why, why, why pretend, right? Um, I mean, but there's they're some, there's some good mantras. ones. Like Epiphany is, is you know, that, that would be an honorable mention. But uh, most of them, uh, like, what, what was the last season or the season before? Like, the monk was 100% support class, right? It was just healing. Yeah. That, that's boring. Like, what does that have to do with the monk? But that's, you know... That's well, that's like the paladin thing, you know. Yeah. So they, but then the, the, we have we have a paladin, he's, but he's called the Crusader, so it's a weird. Yeah, they're kind of overlapping in some yeah. ways. So I thought that was totally off uh, off topic for the monk, uh, this healing thing. Um, so yeah, in, any of the support skills like don't don't do much for me as far as being iconic. So do you have uh, least iconic ones for the monk, uh, James? Uh, I mean, there's so there's so many. It's like like you said, like the mantras. I mean, in some sense, they're. I feel like they failed in some sense to make the mantras iconic because it feels like that should be like the most iconic thing about them, but it doesn't feel that way. And so, you know, like the mantras, breath of heaven, um, the. I mean, even though he's sort of a healing class, but it's just like, how does it? Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? I, I don't know how that fits. Again, the yeah. thing. I, I don't know how that fits with the with the character. Yeah, but, it, it's that they have all the. It's sort of like they threw random things together. It's like here's the monk. Here's what he does. So. Yeah, I had I have a top uh, three least iconic, and my honorable mention was all the mantras. They're just sort of like here's like you just what you guys just said. You know, they're kind of there, but they don't really do enough to be impactful. Mm -hmm. There's nothing really themed about them that they're like. Mystic or monkish? They're, in they're some too. Way. They're too generic. They're too. They're too inactive. Like, right. I, and we had this conversation. We talked about the Crusader uh, skills. Why the laws we didn't choose in our top ten? It's like it's because they're just they just don't they do things. But the only reason they get used or don't get used is because the numbers are big enough. And it's just like they really failed the mantras because it doesn't feel. They're there, but you don't feel like they're there. You don't recognize right. they're there. There's no right. active part to it. Right. There were like my first wife. <laughs> yes, and your second wife too. So. Uh, well, not, I don't know about that one yet. So we'll see. Uh, I could see in the I can future. Always hope, though. I can see in the future. So I'm just. Yeah, if you. only I could. Yeah. So you were saying something the other day before I hijacked it with her first wife jokes. Uh oh. Okay, so I have um number three. Nobody's mentioned this yet. It may be some debate. Tempest Rush. Oh. The staff twirling is cool. It's suddenly it's somehow it's the only staff skill you have, and the whole point of it is running really fast and going through things. Eh. I did eh. I did martial arts for like eight years, and I loved using a staff. It's totally useful. It's really fun. The whole point in a staff is that you stand still and use your reach and your pokiness with a staff or a spear. 
you don't run through things, hit them on the way by. So uh, it's it's non functional in terms of how martial arts actually works. Yeah. And it's also the whole issue we have with the monk initially, where he didn't use weapons except like like his special fist weapons. And then they had to change that because everyone thought it was stupid and, and you can use weapons now, but you don't actually you just punch stuff other on your back. Mm-hmm. This is kind of the ultimate expression of I'm just going to carry yeah. a magical staff that I never use for anything else except for this one skill. Yeah, uh, yeah, I could, I, I get your reasoning for that. So, but that said, it is kind of a monkish skill. Yeah. So. I don't know. I, I, I love using that actually. There were there were times that was a good build, like you know, up to like T. What's it called? Monster power, monster power five or six, and it was so fun to go fast with that. It was like a whirlwind version of for the monk. But yeah, I think it's my number two. Thinking, but yeah. My number two least has already been mentioned, Blinding Flash. It's like it's not a terrible skill as far as, as crowd control mm-hmm. goes, but what is Monk like about this? It, it, it's, it's the thing is, like, they throw so many things together. It's like, okay, so the Monk has, like, some debuff things that he can do, so. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what a Monkish, iconic CC skill would be, but this is not it. Mm-hmm. Number one, we make some debate here, Mystic Ally. I think it's the least iconic Monk skill. I act- Spe- spectral spiritual duplicates. How, what, how is this monk like? How does that relate in any way to what a monk does? I don't know. Okay, uh, I semi disagree, but I'm not gonna. I don't think it's worth talking over. So, I, I kind of feel like it's quasi monk. I mean, again, it's, it, the, the problem is the monk is not very well defined. What he does is the, I guess, the biggest issue. So, yeah, it's like every. It's like what we've talked about before. Like every class needs to have like some companions and some pets or something, and that's that's the one for the monk, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 kind of meh. I mean, it's not as bad as Phalanx, but I like that they tried to do the the whole earth, air, water, fire thing. Yeah, that if that had been a theme through the entire monk skills, that would have been cool. Yeah. True. I guess they didn't think of it until like two years later because this is the this is the skill they added on later on, and you know, diversified. But it just doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't quite work. But it it could. I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I don't know why they're there though. I don't like using them, and it doesn't seem very monkish. So who? So when do you guys throw out your your not your 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 most most iconic, but not your number one? Okay. Um, number three uh, is dashing stri- dashing strike. Also on my list. Yeah. Uh, again, because of you know monk it's supposed to be fast. And unlike a lot of other classes, the monk actually teleports there. Uh, he doesn't just, you know, he can teleport from like platform to platform. Whereas any other class, even they, if they can move fast or even jump ahead, they can't like go through walls or or jump, you know, to different elevations. The monk can do that, so it makes it uh, awesome and totally thematic with the the character, I think. So it's a great skill. So monks can teleport in real life? Yeah, don't you know? I guess I guess to keep that secret. Yep. The whole point, the, whole, the only debate with that skill, I have that as number two in my most iconic monk skill. So obviously I like it in that way. But this was a whole topic on last week's podcast because I was playing the Dashing Strike build, didn't like it because there's no tactile effect of you're hitting things between your teleport points. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the weird part. Like as you say, it, it does teleport, but it, like it almost shouldn't. Like it should be like the the you know furious charge right. for the barb or something. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. I've never actually used it. Um, I've never done a build centered around it. I only use it as like the mobility skill on whatever build that I'm playing for the monk. Because I agree, I don't think it's it's very it, it's very satisfactory as a as as the main skill that's going to do damage in your build. Doesn't doesn't work great for me, but as a mobility skill, it's it's awesome and it's um, um, very iconic. Yeah. At least it is now. I remember, it sucks like the first three years of the game when they finally made it good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Putting charges on him is a big help. So, what's your number two? My number two is exploding palm. Yeah. Also on my top. Also on my list. So. Right. Like uh, how, how couldn't it be right? So I started playing a monk when uh, what? Okay, now I can't remember the name of those bracers. Um, the one that yes, I think it's still my favorite build in uh, in Diablo three. Like the first time you uh, put that exploding palm on monster and you time it right, and then the whole crowd of trash 
and they all explode from you onto the you know the edge of the screen and it's such a rush uh awesome skill yeah the glorious domino effect is very fun with that yeah 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 and so what's your not uh, number 1 James your number my number 3 is this exploding palm so uh, Does the whole uh, Kill Bill inspiration thing make it better or worse? Better. I've never seen Kill Bill, so don't know. Okay, you're soft the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Closing Skype now. <laughs> so what's your number two? Wave of Light. What? It's an or- it's an honorable mention for me. It just so the whole the whole temple bell thing, or do you like the pillar or what? The temple bell thing. It's sort of like I've come in. Again, to me, it's like I didn't really feel that there was that much. The monk is just so thrown together. There's so much not not very iconic stuff with him. I, I don't know. I was I was sort of just like, okay, what do you see all the time when when you see people play monks? And uh, you see a lot of I, for a long time you'd see wave of light builds. So mm-hmm. yeah. Well, that was a skill that was the only offensive skill for like two years that was worth using. Yeah. sadly. Right. And now it's now it's spinning vulture kick. So there you go. Mm-hmm. So you, was that your number three? That was my, number two. Number two. Number three was oh, yeah. exploding palm. Yeah. So I have exploding palm as an honorable mention. I have uh, dashing strike number two. My number three, you guys have not mentioned. Maybe debating this. I have serenity and inner sanctuary as a tie for number three. Yeah, I had that in my honorable mentions. So oh. I was trying to get some not just attack skills. You know. Yeah. It's I just. Mean, it's funny, we all thought his CC and his like his, his support skills sucked. His healing skills are not iconic. It's not that they suck, it's just that... Well, they're just not iconic. They're right. just not iconic, yeah. yeah. You just... And these are the same kind of thing. They're, they're defensive skills, but it, they both seem like they're, they fit the monk archetype, they, right? Yeah, they seem more Far Eastern monk, you know, Shaolin monk type things than, than the, uh, the, the other healing skills and the support skills, so... And they... So, yeah. And they actually I have those the tie for number three. I have Dashing Strike number two. So yes, I mean they're they're cool. You know they look they look like you're doing stuff. Mm-hmm. They do share a little bit to other people. There were some rune effects. You know initially like the huge exploit with monks was like serenity, serenity was like fort, full, fort, full immunity. So for like three seconds, and if you had four monks in the game, you could just all share it and forever be immune. Correct. Like forever. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> that was like the first big nerf of Diablo. Yeah, that was, was hot fix. Days. Yeah, hot fix on day two, wasn't it? Yeah, because there was some, there was a group of guys that were like, way going to get to everything first, and they, like, they, they were like to Belial, I think, on like Inferno, and they Blizzard's like, hey, we're fixing this, you're all fucked. Bye. Yeah, well, they they were world first to sixty, weren't they? We using the exploit. And yeah, something like that. I forget. Yeah. Is that one annoying? That one annoying like German guy or whatever. I forget his name. Yeah, I, I can't remember. It, it, well, it was kind of unwatchable, but he was like super hyperactive. Well, I forget what his name is, um, but he, I remember seeing like the day before he talked about the exploit, and he's like. There's this big exploit with four monks in a party and blah, blah, blah. And then he used it. It was like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, he's right. And then, like, two days later, it gets hot fixed when they're like. And the nerf hammer came down. Yeah, and they were like, they were somewhere in Inferno. I forget now. And they're still there, probably, because they never got any further after that. Probably. So, what's your number one, James? Your number one most iconic monk skill? I kind of went with seven sided strike. It just, to me, felt like the fast. Super fast uh, monk hitting from all sides, well, type thing. Yeah, that's mine too. That's, yeah. that's, uh, I don't know how you can find anything else at the, at the top. Like that's just, uh, uh, yeah, the guy. He's he's moving so fast you can't even see him, and he's striking you from all sides. It's like, mm-hmm. uh, and it makes like cool rune patterns on the ground. Yes. And stuff. I, I I actually have seven sided strike as well, so we have a first ever agreement, first and probably last ever agreement mm-hmm. for all three of us. Yep. So I guess it's official. Seven sided strike is the most uh, iconic monk skill. Definitely. What was hitting fast, teleporting, like cool graphics? Yeah. I thought about having an exploding palm vote on there at the top of it. Obviously, we all went for uh, SSS. Mm-hmm. So how would uh, if there were. We all kind of mentioned in the opening there weren't any like European themes to these skills, and I'm not sure what that would even be like the European monk. I mean, I don't know what they could even like you know invent like wine at horticulture. I mean, I don't know what you'd even. I do. mean, they they basically made him European to white Bur- burn heretic. Yeah, to whitewash him so because he would probably sell better than if he they made him Eastern Euro- Eastern uh, Asian. But you know, ah, uh, you sound like a Hollywood casting director. Uh, just uh, just telling the truth, Flux. Just telling the truth. 
And suddenly Scarlett Johansson is playing in Ghost in the Show. <laughs> oh, what was the um, M. Light Shyamalan? He made the awful Avatar movies. Yeah. Movie, I guess. And they have put like white people in every role. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that worked out real well. Yeah. And with Any final monk thoughts for you, Dave? What's that? Any final monk thoughts? Uh, no, I had uh, Inner Sanctuary in uh, Honorable Mention, even though I said support skills, but uh, don't, don't do it that much for me. But Inner Sanctuary um, has always been helpful also for running, running out my, my builds. And it, it's kind of thematic. You know, he's like praying or meditating or something, and he's like creating this... Area of uh, protection for I don't, I don't know, but I like I like the skill. But oh, no. yeah, that's why I had that for number two tied there with uh, the other one, Serenity. Yep. Okay, barbarian. I have a lot of least iconic barbarian skills. Then be shots fired here with James in a minute. Uh, uh, there's one that sort of sticks out to me as least iconic. Other than avalanche, you mean? I actually. Well, okay, I I do agree it's on the lower end of iconic, but I kind of. I don't know. To me, it's like fall. It's sort of like if you could think of earthquake as quasi iconic, then avalanche is it. You're bringing the stuff down that you destroyed with earthquake. So I don't know. Well, that's my number two. So we'll get to that in a minute. My number two least iconic yeah. barbarian seal. Do you have any least iconic ones, James? Uh, the other person, Dave. Dave, friend. Okay, that's on my honorable mention. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't think it fits the theme. Like you're making people bleed. From, uh, it's, it's it's just kind of weird. I mean, it's a great skill, like function function wise. I, I think it's quasi quasi iconic, but I mean, it's really? it's not. Yeah, I don't know. I just just more damage. I mean, he it, it's one of his few damage over time abilities. So you don't think of him as a damage. Which makes it totally uniconic. Yeah, if, if, exactly. if you don't think of damage over time, then I guess it wouldn't be iconic to you. So that's just. Okay, I, I guess I get I understand that regards to it, but but that's what we were talking about earlier, right? Is that they they are uh, putting those skills for each class, like so. What is the pet skill that we can give to that class, and what is the damage over time? And that's there you go, something that doesn't really fit, but we need to give one of those to the barbarian, and so there you go, rent. I'm gonna make people bleed. Okay, I guess yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I will quote my very brief notes on rent. What? Question mark. <laughs> Unnecessary additional melee range multi-target thing. A remnant from some early stage of the game where barbs lacked sufficient multi-enemy assaults. Yeah. Okay, next topic. Uh, well, my I'll go with my least iconic. Uh, is I had Threatening Shout as least iconic. You only have one least iconic. Well, it just, I played enough barb, that's the one that sort of sticks out to me as this is not barbarian. So. But it's one of the I, I just had all the war cries thrown in together as kind of honorable mention. Then they're not terrible, but they're just sort of there. Yeah, well, I mean the other ones, the other ones, battle cry is damage. War cry is toughing toughing you up. Threatening shout basically is like uh, I'm making the enemies weaker. And to me, it's just like that's not barbarian. He just kills them. So. But he's so imposing in his majestic yeah. might that they're intimidated. Yeah. No, I like don't. the guy, like in Gladiator, when they're going through the gate and the one guy's pissing all over himself, that threatening shout is in use right there. Yeah, I don't know. Well, anyway, go with yours, and we can, we can, I can spit more fire onto the story. So go. Okay, honorable mention. I had three honorable mention, least iconic. Rin, we already mentioned. Mm -hmm. Revenge. Yeah. Not terrible. Why is this even a barbarian skill? This should be in the Demon Hunter's melee tree. I mean, it, revenge was one of those things that before, like. 1.04, you might have to do that just because it gave you survivability because of all the healing you could get from that. So Again, barbarians don't heal. It's yeah. not iconic. In their skill yeah, class, they not, kill things. It, yeah, again, I'm not... I'm not saying it's not a useful skill. I'm just saying it's not iconic. I, yeah, I'm not disagreeing with you. You hit me, I'm going to hit you back even harder. I mean, that's kind of like... Okay, I can kind of see that, like, you know, mm -hmm. barbarian-ish, but... I, I didn't like the... I mean, I used to use it a ton. I, I, it seemed like it was another one of those ones from the early days where you only hit, like, one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Like, if your only other skill was Bash, this was an awesome skill, but... Yeah. My next honorable mention, Uniconic, which you'll probably do some disagreements with, H-O-T-A. It's a giant glowing Donkey Kong hammer. Really? You don't think that's iconic? 
Barbs don't use giant glowing Fisher Price Donkey Kong hammers. They use their own weapons. Yeah, I, I agree. It's not super iconic. I, I say it's fun to play, though. So I, I did a build. Okay, I always hated the. I never fun. liked it as a skill either. So it, that's probably influenced. Super you really fun want, fun build. You, you really wanted me to to disagree with you, Flux. I see. So I said I was throwing you out some uh, some some link bait here, some clickbait. Yeah, uh, go on. I'm sure you'll agree with my top three. That one, that one, I realize is a popular skill. I never liked it. I mean, hitting smash. You know, obviously it's just kind of like a super version of bash in some ways. Mm-hmm. But just that it's just the giant glowing blue effect of it always seemed a little bit cheesy to me. Very, very Donkey Kong. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the implementation that's bugging you. Like you said, I, I, Donkey Kong is exactly what I thought of the first time I saw it. I was like, oh, it's you know. If it was like this huge cracked, like rusting thing that looked like you know looked like um the furnace. God, what's this? Yeah, the furnace. You know, like some like like fire, like fire of hell kind of thing, like like smoking out of it coming. If you look like the stuff that the that the giant berserker occultist hits you with, I could be a little happier with it, but it just looks cheesy, I think. I don't know. That makes it non-iconic to me. Anyway, number three, ancient spear. Yeah. It's weapon throw with a spear. Yeah. What? Yeah. Un-iconic. It feels like another early game feature where they were regretting that they removed throwing weapons from the game, because, I mean, spears were a thing in, on Barbarians and Diablo 2. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to put in some kind of ranged attack, and then later events rendered it totally irrelevant, but no one ever heart, had the heart just to remove it from the game. Yeah. So it's just kind of there still. And it had the one awesome root effect, was the, you know, the harpoon, where you could like pull somebody in in PvP. But of course, that was only cool like in 2010 at BlizzCon when they had the PvP in there. Never has been ever useful since. Yeah. Yeah. Number two, least iconic barbarian skill, Avalanche. No disagreement. Tell us- no disagreement there. It's... It's definitely on the in low end of I, low iconic. So, okay. Any other before I do number one? You guys didn't even have any least iconic. You love them all. Uh, weapon throw. I was I was looking yeah, at. Yeah, that's that, that's. You could throw that in with ancient spear. Yeah, it's that's just dumb. Like it's. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Downright dumb. But but mean? though I mean. <laughs> Even without thinking too hard about the lore and what a barbarian is and what that, it's definitely a melee guy, right? And so mm-hmm. you're doing that uh, range thing, and it, it just doesn't really make sense to me. But I, it's not dumb. It's just, it doesn't really belong. It's not iconic at all. That's that's all. Okay, that was your second shot at home. If you were doing again, the topic tonight is <coughs> short terms that could be the name of this podcast. You just said without thinking too hard about the lore. So there you go. Number two, take your shot. If you want to think about lore, go listen to Nine Balls podcast with Leviathan. They will talk pretty talk about like Darth Vader and like he's not really Luke's father or whatever. But yeah. we don't give a shit about lore here. So okay, number one, John, least iconic version. John Jar is Luke's father, right? Yes. Yeah, he's awesome. Yes. he was actually the Dark Sith Lord running yeah. the whole universe. Yeah. Yes, he's actually uh, going to be revealed as uh, uh, the new guy in Episode Eight. That that's the hush hush thing. So can't wait. Awesome, that'll be great. Can't wait. Yeah, it was almost as bad as Episode Seven. Number one, overpower. Definitely not iconic. I don't iconic. even know what this is. Yeah. It's like a half-assed, like, Nova something. I don't I don't even... I used to use it once in a while. It's like a buff, but it also affects things. It, it's it's like a really bad wizard skill. It's it's a, it's a really funky skill in, in terms of its implementation. So... It's, it makes it... it makes, it's like that imitation, like a, like a legendary item just dropped right on top of you kind of thing. Yeah, it's a beam of light, but I don't even—I don't even know what it does. I used to remember used to using that, and I was always hated when I had to use it because even it was effective. It, it basically is like a battle cry that does damage, but not, uh, but not actually a war cry or a, well, you can't use war cry, but a a, a, a shout type thing. So, so it's a buff, but it's like not really. I don't—I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I don't know why it's uh, uh, unaconic as well. I agree. It could be a decent monk skill or a crusader skill, I guess, but it doesn't fit the barb to my eyes. No. So most, I have two honorable mentions and then a top three, but I've been talking for a while. So when do you guys do your do all of your most, but not number one? Uh, so I had three that sort of like whenever I associate with the barb, I have the three in my mind that I feel like the people who don't play barb associate with them. Uh, number three was uh, war cry, battle cry, uh, tie. Uh, of the the shouts to to super strengthen up the character, um, do more damage and make them even you know uh, tougher and whatnot and help the group type thing as well. Uh, 
especially Impunity, which was the Warcry that gave you R-Resist, which was the one that was, like, used, like, for a very long time until, like, after 1.0, 1.09, I think, is when they finally, like, changed it around, so not everyone was using it, but... Um, anyway, those two. Yeah, I had honorable mention Warcry, mm-hmm. so just threw yeah, them in there. Yeah. Uh, number two for me was Wrath, uh, with Insanity. Wrath, not on my list. Yeah. Of... Uh, Super just makes him super crazy killing machine that can go through things. Yeah, it's somebody. Oh yeah, Wrath of the Berserker. Yeah, I, I thought about that, but it seemed kind of generic. Mm. Well, I think it's because the game. Your list, Dave. I think the if I can get get a second here, well, more than a second, but I think the problem you're having with the, the thing is that they basically gave by the end they gave every character or class basically something like that a super buff damaging ability. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's obviously his super killer mode thing. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't... The Barber didn't have anything like that in Diablo 2, at least. So, I mean, obviously Diablo 2 is not the ultimate source of canon for everything. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I mean, that's like a berserker skill. I don't I don't see barbarians... I guess the barbarian berserker thing is kind of a kind of an overlap there, but... I mean, obviously it's a very powerful skill, and everyone loves it, but I, I didn't see it as being totally barbarian iconic. It's really? like a different character. Bit. I'm, I'm going to disagree with that. that one, like, the, the Berserker, that's that's totally the, you know, the Arnold Schwarzenegger guy going crazy on the battlefield. Yeah, because it also has a very... Because when you use it, your character model changes to be... Right. Yeah. At, and I like the male, the male character model change, too. So I like the visual of it as well. Well, he doesn't look old and tired anymore. Mm. At least radioactive. So he's like Hulk... Basically, is what you're saying, but not not as green. Yeah. So, what's your what's your uh, number three, number two, Dave? Uh, my number three is Call of the Ancients. Yeah. What? <laughs> it's on my honorable mention. It's yeah it's def- for best or worst for best. best. Yeah, it's. But why does a barbarian calling up spirits? That's not his. Because he's that it's big of a story. badass. Yeah. Because he's that just big. like the Crusader calling up uh, ancient ghost low warriors to fight beside him. I don't yeah, know. I think not... it fits a lot more on the barbarian, though. I, I can't really pinpoint why. With all of his other summoning skills. I I don't know. I, I guess it fits the lore of Diablo, right? Because uh, he conquered like, them in Diablo two, and so now he gets to call them when he needs them in Diablo three. That's my lore explanation of. Sure. Uh, they look like him. They do the same thing he's doing. I think it's, you know, he's cutting up on his ancestors. I think it's great. But, but we all agree that the the monk's version of that skill is not iconic for the monk. Correct. Not really. It's just poorly implemented for the monk is the thing. They, they Again, with the mantras, and the, if they had done it the monk better, we could have been saying the mantras and mystic allies were the two of the more... The two most iconic categories for the monk, and they failed in that regards. If you want to say that, call it, say it that way. But okay, what's your number two, Dave? Whirlwind. Yeah. Yeah, that has to be in the top somewhere. That has somewhere. to be somewhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a counterpoint, but go ahead. I've I've played that bill quite a bit. It's fun to play. Uh, it was like everybody was playing it, and like was it season two or three? I don't remember. Everyone but... was playing in vanilla. Like, let's go back far enough. Yeah, sure. Uh, it, it, it's fun to play. It's you recognize it right away. It's like okay, this is the barbarian doing the whirlwind. It's it's uh, it's great. It's iconic. Whirlwind. Okay, I have that as my number three, but at the same time, it's a bit like leap in that it's iconic for the barb, but only because they were Diablo two skills that the barbarian had. Mm-hmm. If Diablo three had invented whirlwind, wouldn't we be like, why is the barb spinning in circles like a big ballerina? But how that's, is, how that's, is barbarian? That's part of the lore and the 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 game is the callbacks to other games. I mean, like you said, you liked Fetish Army because of the callback to the fetishes from Diablo two, and I feel like it's a sort of the the same here. They're they're it's a homage to Diablo two that you know that they have whirlwind. But if it was a brand new skill, wouldn't it be like, why doesn't he get dizzy? How is this barbaric? Doesn't he stand still and smash things? Uh, he like a forward, but, he's like a forward and back. He's like a charge forward guy. He's like we, a we say, side to side guy. Did we say what Whirlwind wasn't iconic in Diablo 2 because it was introduced then? Uh, we, well, we, uh, that was when Barbarians first came into existence in the game, though, so there wasn't a predecessor. Yeah, well, it's it's iconic because of the predecessor. And, I think and it's part fits. of it. I think it fits in the theme of the barbarian 
you know, losing himself or herself in the battle and just going crazy and just moving. And he's spending in circles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. And you can do it with a spear. I think it would be better, I mean, better, thematically speaking, if, you know, it was something where you have to use, like, say, a hammer, because, you know, it makes more sense, like, uh, the laws of or physics, polar, like, uh, spinning, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I think it's great. This is... Yeah, I had it at number three. I was just kind of devil's advocating mm-hmm. some of the uh, potentials there. So I had a couple of honorable mentions. I have Bash and Cleaves kind of as a tie honorable mention. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of boring to rate them higher, but they're just so, you know, Hulk smash. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would say that this seems really appropriate for the barb. I put in Leap, but again, Leap is a little bit like the uh, Whirlwind, and like Leap Attack was awesome in Diablo 2, and it seems, you know, he, I'm not sure why the Barbarian has like magical leaping skills, though. That's the thing. Like, I would I would not have put Leap in the list, not even an honorable mentions, because the, the jumping thing, it's definitely fun to play. Uh, it's fun to, to watch, but I, I I just don't see this big mag, big mass muscles like jumping. You know, well, when he comes down with a massive smash and crunch on things that he hits, that makes it sure. really useful. And his spawns, his spawns an earthquake, then it's pretty badass. But yeah, f- fair enough. But so, so you don't see the massive muscles leaping, but you're okay with him spinning around a hundred thousand times. Correct. Okay, so he's, he's very well total balanced. Logic, massive muscles. Total logic there, Dave. I completely <laughs> agree. Yes, yeah, so I had so I had whirlwind number three. We already mentioned that. I had ground stomp number two. Not a big flashy skill, but it's a bit like you know. It's like a war cry, but you're doing it by smashing the ground really, really hard with your massive, mighty legs. Mm-hmm. That seems appropriate to me. A little bit like leap, exactly. You kind of leap up and, you know, it, basically it's the same effect as a war cry, except that it's not just yelling, but it's like you're you're using your massive power to crush the earth. I guess that would that would open the door to earthquake, which I think sucks. So we have to call it draw a line somewhere. So somebody else go. Number one, what's your number one most iconic barb skill? Uh, to me, it's whirlwind. Like, everyone playing Diablo 2 thinks of Whirlwind, what they think of Barb, and same thing in Diablo 3. You see Whirlwind, you, or you think, see Barb, you think Whirlwind, so. What's your number one, Dave? Uh, Wrath. Wrath? Wrath of the Berserker? Yeah, uh, yeah. because it's, it's, the one, it's the one skill that has sort of been taken from the lore outside of Diablo, you know, like the, the crazy warrior that, you know, he's, he's like raging. He defeated, yeah, he defeated right. Bale, he's defeated all the, the prime evils in, or not the prime evils, but the, the evils of Diablo 2, and now he's out to, to unleash even more fury. Yeah. I have that honorable mention, but yeah, I think there are arguments to be made on both sides of it. But yeah, my number one, not mentioned yet. Would you want to try to guess? Mm. You guys didn't work out last time. Furious Charge? Uh, that's honorable mention. I didn't. I was. I couldn't have a hundred honorable mentions, but that's that's definitely on there. But it's not my number one. I don't know if the fast motion thing is a barbarian's trademark exactly, but I think the massive power and smashing things with incredible crushing of the earth is a is a thing, which is a hint. Earthquake. No, that one sucks. Seismic slam? Yeah, there you go. Seismic slam. Yeah. You're using your weapon, you're hitting the ground so hard, you're causing this massive shock wave. It's like this elemental kind of force attack on the ground. Kind of like... But it just seems very barbaric. Just, just being able to like, make the earth tremble makes me think barbaric. Seems to like be... of the Ancients. Yeah, yeah to me, <laughs> Hammer of the Ancients is more iconic than Seismic Slam. But it's got a giant... Seismic Slam doesn't have a giant blue Donkey Kong you're, hammer. You're... Hammer. you're, you're, you're to me, it's like you're hung up on the animation and not the... The, the visuals are an essential element of the yeah, skill. The, the, yeah, I would agree with Flux on that. Like, the, the visuals are important. Like, if it's yeah. too goofy, like, it, it obviously doesn't click with, with Flux, but, um, yeah, I, I, I like Hammer of the Ancients better, too. Mm-hmm. They should move that from the game immediately. Yeah, so Sesame Slam, again, not super useful, but I just thought it was a very iconic sort of... It's a gra- it's a ranged attack that is not just uh, like some magical wave of force or like a laser beam or something. It is like him hitting the ground so hard that this shock wave, this tremor goes forth and like knocks things back. I thought that was very iconic barbarian kind of imagery. Like I'm so powerful, I can just crush the earth and use it to destroy you. It should like knock down walls and stuff too. We can't go, we can't have everything we want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, whirlwind can certainly be debated. If whirlwind like went through walls, of course it did in Diablo too. But anyway. So any any other uh, barbarian thoughts, guys? The only uh, 
character whose voice is not overacted. It's good, good voice. I like the voice. Male or female? Male. Or both? I, what does the female barbarian sound like? Very deep, steroid-written woman. Yeah. So like my first wife, basically. <laughs> and second. <laughs> you keep you keep reading things in that don't exist yet. I, I told you I could see the future, folks. It's not good for uh, you. Uh, well, given given your avatar, I will believe you can see into the future because you can certainly see into my soul just by looking through me through your Skype avatar. Mm-hmm. Kind of disturbing in that way, honestly. So that's it. We've covered all six classes. I kind of want to do this with Diablo two characters at some point now. Maybe it'll be a future podcast. Yeah, uh, you'll have to do that without me. Never played it. I'm waiting for the. Okay, I'm waiting for the remaster. The podcast again. You're waiting for the HD announcement that. I, I am. Yeah. Well, aren't we all? I think it'd be a long wait, though. I'm afraid. Yeah. You'll see. You'll see Jay Wilson back at Blizzard before you see that. So. Mm. Count your uh, chickens. Yeah, I bet it's out in 2017. Uh, I bet it's not. I don't think I was debating that with someone in the, in the guild a couple nights ago. We were talking about this. I don't. I don't. You couldn't, if you could just magically click a button and have Diablo 2 super updated graphics, all 3D, everything, I don't think it would be, it'll be playable because it's such a slow learning curve and it, it's, it's really hard. You have to like find gear before you can do anything. Yeah, my, it's the exact opposite of Diablo 3 in that way. Yeah, yeah, my brother has replayed Diablo 2 like from scratch and self found, and it's, it's, a, it's a much different experience than Diablo 3. Let's put it that way. It's. And everyone sort of remembers Diablo 2, and I think they sort of remember after the, the 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 burdens of finding things before they could get past hell uh, and whatnot. There is such a thirst for it that I get, you go on Reddit, you go to Twitch streams or whatever. People are like, oh, Diablo 2, Diablo 2, remake Diablo 2. And Rose-tinted glasses. Like, yeah, <laughs> no, I, I fully agree. And, and plus, like, if you want to play Diablo 2 with modern graphics, just go try Path of Exile. Like it'll, I think it'll quench your thirst. Probably. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. But no, I think they should move forward, and it's not going to be a remaster anyway. I think they're just going to make it so that it works on modern computers, but they're not going to. It's not going to be Diablo 3's 3D graphics or or anything like that. I think people are are. Um, are hoping that it's going to be a total, you know, rewriting from scratch, new engine and, and whatnot, but that's not at all what they said. Um, so it, it'll just work. You can, you can play it again, actually, that when it comes out. Well, they made that announcement a couple of months ago. They were, you know, hired, they were hiring somebody to keep the old games playable. They're like, oh, they're going to remake all the old games. Like, no, no, they're not. Yeah. There's no money in that. Yeah. They're just going to make them so you can run it on like a, you know, Windows 10 or whatever. Yep. But who knows? Anyway, so any any final thoughts, guys? You, you haven't played much this season. Are you, are you inspired by all this iconi- iconography to go out and play some more Diablo three? No. Yeah, I kind of want to switch back to the monk now. The one we agreed had no iconic skills and no no clear character development theme. No, seven sided strike, man. And, and like nobody's playing exploding plum anymore, probably because it, it's not. Uh, I'm guessing it's it's not very good anymore, but. And I so love that build. Yeah, it was fun. Everyone plays the uh, the vulture kick build now because that's, they have like five new items that just proc that one skill. Uh, so it's they, super powerful. They played because of the it, numbers. It looks lame to me. They played because of the numbers. Okay. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. People, people will do anything they can. Which is fine. No matter how boring because it's powerful. Yeah, it, it's fine. But yeah, no, it's not fine. It's wrong. Split. They should have they should have more taste. Yep. You should resist your urges in that way. <laughs> Okay, guys. Well, thanks for your time. We've uh, covered all the iconic skills now, and I'm sure there'll be massive disagreement, but nobody really cares. No. And uh, the the main point is nobody can agree on anything that's iconic or not unless it's seven-sided strike, apparently. We all agreed on that one. Yeah. Seven-sided strike it's, for the win. If I got... If I was organized and I, and I cared and got paid for it anymore, I would like do some update on the website and be like, here's a big vote. Pick the vote, three most iconic skills for every class, and then we'd have like a, like a runoff with each class's but that would just be a popularity bill, you know. Someone would say like, "Oh, I like I like Wrath of the Berserker, so it's the best skill." Right. I think the discussion in podcast form is is more useful because you kind of like like we've done. We kind of talk about w- what is iconic, but like you say, people would w- just vote for what does the most damage or what do I like using. Like, 
I don't think that would be that would say very much. You agree there, um, James? Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for elaborating on that. <laughs> that's for, don't, that's why you're the best color color commentator man in the business, James. Of course. Exactly. Okay. You have been listening to the Diablo 3 podcast. We are online at DiabloI.net. At some point, we may do top three or top five skills or most iconic skills for Diablo 2 on a flashback episode here. I keep mentioning them as on these recent shows. I haven't played the game in like five years, but I played it a billion hours in the old days, and it's kind of fun to look at the stuff then. If not, we will just do our next show talking about regular Diablo 3 stuff. We have, what, like two months left in the season? It seems like it's been on forever, but it's got a long way to go, I guess, still. How far is uh, BlizzCon? Uh, early November, like November 8th, 9th, something like that. So, two and a half two months. months. Two and a half months, yeah. Long way to go. We'll do some BlizzCon build-up at some point. I do, I do have a ticket to BlizzCon if I have time to go this year. I'm not sure if I will or not, but I have Blizzard has reserved me a slot. I, like I, go in, I could go inside and look at Overwatch if I wanted to. And a Hearthstone. And Hearthstone. Come on, Max. man. They're, they're going to announce Diablo 4, and you're not going to be there. And be WoW Legionnaires. They are so not announcing Diablo 4. They're not. Oh, my, my, even my first wife can see that one coming. <laughs> okay, guys, thanks. Do you have a BlizzCast? Diablo Con, Blizz, Blizz thing, but... Moo. Moo.